Hi, welcome to the next talk on culture, foreign policy and society in times of change. I'm in Wrocław, Breslau in Poland, which used to be the cultural capital of 2016. And we are both here in the opera building and one of the first performances, opera performances took place today combined with an art exhibition. So I'm very excited because it's the first art experience after this long time of the pandemic and I'm so happy to meet Katarzyna Mwinczak Sachs. Uh, she used to be the international coordinator, the coordinator for international cooperation of the European Cultural Capital of 2016 and now the director of the Krupa Gallery. This exhibition um, which was opened today is um, created by her uh, and we can see here works by the very famous um, Polish artist Pola Dvornik. I'm very happy to meet you again Katarzyna and to talk after you. a few years. <laughs> After a few years and to talk with you about the impact of the corona pandemic for you as a gallerist and of course uh, about um, this exhibition we can see here. I will then uh, post also some links for you. So um, Kasia, perhaps we start with this. Um, what remains uh, after the cultural capital in Wrocław after now we have five years that passed already? Yes, uh, thank you for thank you for meeting, and I'm 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 super happy that we can talk live and not on Zoom and experience something really live because for me experiencing music only via the the, the digital tools is is difficult, especially having kids at home. You never you can never concentrate. So I'm 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 really happy on this occasion and also being in the opera and having here art. Uh, but uh, coming back to your question about the, what, what remained after the European Capital of Culture, uh, I hope what remained is not now killed by the pandemia and uh, all the eager of people to participate in culture. Because for me the, the biggest value was that we really managed to invite more people, more also locals to engage uh, into culture and cultural activities from the, both the very high art but also to the very local activities, exhibitions, concerts. I think that it's something where everyone can find something for him on his or her level. Uh, what remains are of course the investments, the buildings. Uh, we had a lot of it in Poland. Uh, everybody before said it's, it's not, the, not, not the most important thing to have uh, the buildings as such, the infrastructure, but I always claim that uh, without having a fantastic uh, Philharmonie you cannot invite a fantastic uh, orchestras and, and people like now in the opera the artistic director is uh, Mariusz Kwiecień, a world famous singer and I think it wouldn't be possible if not the, not, not, not the building also and people who are eager to, 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 to work with him so it's also something that's developed through the uh, European Capital of Culture. Um, What's, uh, what is now something that also changed, I think, in our expectations to culture is that we, we are more open to have international productions, artists, culture in Wrocław and the audience is more and more looking forward to it and not only expecting to have Polish artists. I think it used to be very much like it before, that, we, that Polish artists wanted to be shown or be exhibited here and the audience was also mainly prepared to, to, to have them. So I think as a, as a city and as an audience and, as, and the institutions are ready to, to have more international art and culture. And how has happened that you opened the gallery, you are now the director of Kupa Gallery. <laughs> uh, is it also one of the consequences of the cultural capital? It was a lucky coincidence, as it always is. Uh, it was always my dream to run a gallery. Uh, and during the European Capital of Culture, I, I met Piotr Krupa, uh, who is a businessman, but he also 
started his started collecting art and had a dream to 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 run a gallery, but he doesn't have time for it. And somehow we, he, he offered me the the position to to run and open a, a gallery in in Wrocław. The the gallery is a building is still under construction for already three years time. <laughs> But I think we will, uh, we will succeed <laughs> shortly and by the end of the year the gallery will be open. So I invite everyone uh, to come to Wrocław. The gallery will be situated on the main square in, in Wrocław. But we did already plenty of exhibitions here in, in Poland, in different cities, but also we did exhibitions in, in Lviv and in, in Germany. So we want to also to, to be more international. Now, of course, through the last two years, it was less possible than, uh, than we hoped uh, with all the travel restrictions. Uh, nevertheless, we, we thought it's a nice and good time to maybe to concentrate more on building our also audience and making audience development and working with, with younger artists who are also more eager to jump into projects on a short term because of the, all the changing uh, COVID restrictions. You, we never knew if we were going to close or open. <laughs> so it was quite dynamic. And, but we managed still to open four exhibitions last summer. We, we opened the summer now, stage. and Now everything is open in Poland. So the cultural institutions open, the museums are open. So it's like a spring uh, of culture. This is what I saw during the last days in Poland. But which impact, in your opinion, this pandemic, like for the last 15 months, had on the cultural life and also on your work uh, as a gallerist? So, some some artists uh, claim it was it is a, it is a good time to to concentrate and work in your in in their studios. But of course, I think it's it's never a good time such a situation with with all the restrictions, and it will somehow resonate in our minds and psycho because this even if we had I don't know good life or in this pandemia time then then still not knowing how it will change and what will happen i think it's it's something that we will remember this uncertainty and it's not over yet <laughs> and it's yeah. not over yet yes so i think it's in in, in this circumstances it's uh, it was it was somehow difficult or it will be we really tried to do a lot, I think. So we were not uh, only sitting and thinking. We, of course, we used this time very much to prepare uh, works and work for the for the future gallery. But we, as I mentioned, we did a few projects with with younger artists. We developed one, uh, I think, nice uh, project where I also learned a lot that was only online about experiencing pandemia uh, with, so with support. With young people, young yes, artists? With young artists, very international, with support of the Bosch Alumni Network. And the title is the virtual canvas dot site. <laughs> And it's quite quite interesting. We also ask the artists how they experience and what what are their. It was and it, what was also interesting. We st we started the project in summer last year, and then everybody thought it's over. So we thought, okay, we won't do this project because we were planning it in April, and then we we, we started working in in summer, but somehow nobody was interested to evaluating the pandemic. Everyone was happy that finally we have holidays and it seems it's, it will be normal, but then uh, at the end of uh, August it turned out, no, no, it's not over. The next wave is coming and suddenly uh, <laughs> all the artists Everything were on board and, the, yes, and we, we finished the project like in May, yeah, so in fact last month with 12 works from different artists from India, through Poland, Germany, so up to the US. So you so. had enough, enough work, but if you should sum up, if you can sum up it now, the time of the pandemia, like thinking about the, uh, the impacts on culture, art, let's say, how you would sum it up, like in one sentence? 
I think for for us in, in Poland, then it damaged the the work that we did about the audience development. So that we lost a lot of audience as cu culture as such. Although now it seems that it is it's it's blooming, but still uh, all the institutions they accept only fifty percent of the normal uh, capacity. Capacity. Thank you. So I, I, I think we, we, we lost uh, some, of the, some of the audience and I, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but from such, let's say, ordinary people who, who usually do, do not participate that much in culture and you have to really gain their attention, so now you have to, uh, we have to do this work again. To rebuild, uh, yeah. rebuild culture life and the I audience. I think so. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Why did you decide, like the, with these first live projects, why did you decide to work with the opera of Wrocław and with Pola Dvornik and show her art pieces? Uh, we, we already work with Pola Dvornik for, uh, for a longer time. I know also Pola privately for <laughs> many years. And uh, I think it's a nice example of networks and of how culture r resonates in us because we had the exhibition that is shown in Opera, The Twelve Husbands of Apollonia, which we have shown it three years ago in Warsaw. Uh, and the maestro of this opera, Basa Makiki, was invited to this exhibition. And now, two months ago, he had this idea to use the paintings of Paula Dvornik to, to, as, as a scenography for the, for the Schoenberg's uh, song. So, so somehow, yeah, so, something he saw a few years ago, now the time came up that uh, you, you can use them. To, yes. to the, the, the paintings are very, very detailed, so rich in details and very baroque and he thought it will suit to the, to, the, to the pieces, and I think it did. Paula Dvornik will uh, shortly explain us about yeah. her work in the opera, but my last question, what are the plans for the future uh, of your gallery, and when you think about the international cooperation, what are you working on, what we will see next? Uh, we will, in this summer, we will continue with our uh, summer stage with younger artists uh, because we also weren't sure how it, how it will go, but uh, so, so this time we, we programmed uh, exhibitions with younger artists uh, that now, on, some of them now only also won the, the international prizes in, in paintings, mainly from, from Krakow. So we will have three exhibitions now in this, in this summer. And then I really very much hope we will meet at the opening in, in Krupa Gallery at the end of the year or at the very beginning of the next year. And uh, we will have our main program there. But uh, the gallery has a dual works, so uh, program. So on, on one hand, we, want, we will work as an institution, but on the other hand, uh, we want to be also a, a private gallery and represent and sell artists, because it's still the market is in, in Poland is very small, and I think it's more like a mission to show people that it's, you can participate in art, but you can also have this art or collect it. And we applied for some art fairs uh, this year and we will be in paper positions in Berlin in August and then later on in uh, Barcelona in October. That's great news. So <laughs> I wish you good luck and Thank you. I'm really looking forward to meet you uh, for the opening of the gallery of <laughs> end of the year. And then I'm um, yeah, looking forward to the continuation of the talk with Pola Dvornik. Thank you so much. Katarzyna Mynczak Zaks. Thank you, Karolina. <laughs>Hi, Paula, Paula Dvornik, I'm very happy to meet you. It's your day today, exhibition in the Opera of Wrocław. I don't know, is it the first project after the pandemic times, the for, opening? For me? Yeah. No, no, it's no? one of the... I, I already had one solo show uh, in February this year, so 
during the pandemic. Oh, so this was, as this well. was possible in Poland to open an exhibition yes. during pandemic times? In February. There was a, a slot, I think two weeks, when uh, there, it was possible to have an opening and a gallery open for public. Oh, great. Uh, so what, uh, uh, what we can see here in the opera, uh, why, did you, but why uh, did you even start this cooperation with, with uh, the music hall, with the opera here in Wrocław? Well, it was idea of Basim Makiki. It was his idea after he uh, visited one of my openings and one of my exhibitions. We know each other, but he had never uh, seen my works before and then he saw them and liked them a lot. And it was his concept to mix or to combine my works, my oil paintings, with uh, the music of Arnold Schoenbach. And I love music. I love both very traditional music, I love Mozart, but I also love more modern and more experimental music like Arnold Schoenberg. So I was honored and I am honored to be here. And uh, I always, almost always listen to music when I paint in oh, my classical studio. Classical music? Very often, mm -hmm. yes, because I love classical music. I love opera, for instance, I, I truly do. So I think it's maybe somehow you can feel it in my works, so they match together very well. I mean, my works, my oil paintings and the classical music. What do you have chosen uh, for Wrocław? Well, uh, for Wrocław we chose, together with Krupa Gallery, uh, Apollonia's Twelve Husbands. It's a series of 12 male portraits of 12, I would say, allegories of 12 months of the year, from January to J till June. Uh, to, sorry, what am I saying? From January to December. until December, through December. And uh, because uh, a portrait, portrait gallery is a very classical uh, kind of uh, painting and it's not very uh, often uh, created nowadays uh, because portrait, you can you rather use photography for this kind of uh, art, uh, visual art. But I decided that I would like to uh, try to describe 12 uh, periods of time of one's life from childhood till the end within using this metaphor of uh, months, of 12 months from January till December. It also uh, fitted perfectly into the work of Schoenberg with this number of 13 with all this mathematical approach. So uh, there's another beautiful link to that. True. Um, you started with uh, saying that you had an exhibition during the pandemic times, but of course in Poland, the galleries, the museums were also closed. So how yourself experienced the last 15, uh, 15 months? Well, I, I am a studio artist, so-called studio artist. That means <clears throat> I generally sit, stay in my studio and work. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Maybe I, I start again. Mm -hmm. As a studio artist, I rather stay in the studio, in my painting uh, studio and work and I do not go out very often when, when I'm in the process of create, creation. So I actually, it was perfect time for me to, to create new works, to think, to reflect, to plan. So I would say it was a very fruitful, fruitful time for me because I had a lot of time for working on new paintings, new drawings, new art books. And um, normally I'm, uh, I don't like very much the pressure of you know going out all the time which is uh, you know go attending openings events i like it but it makes my work harder for me because i have to stop the the process which is the most uh, something i love when i do uh, a piece like this a big piece it 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 requires a lot of time so it was a very good time for me actually frankly and what did you create new? Uh, which kind of works did you do? perhaps change the approach? Because, of course, observing what's going on in the world, uh, these times of change, did this uh, have um, or this ha had an impact on you? I wouldn't say that pandemic itself yet. I will think about it, whether I will uh, comment 
on this uh, subject. It's a very difficult time for many of my friends as well, because not most of them had a very, very tough time. And I think I will uh, do some works about this time, but I need more time. So I was uh, continuing my uh, main series, so-called main series, uh, big, big oil paintings with a female character as a main protagonist uh, in a different uh, scenarios. And I did also, uh, it was a perfect time to finish uh, an art book project, Unhappy Ending with Anja Malinowska who wrote uh, poems and I did drawings for those poems. And this is a bit, a bit gloomy and, and sad because it's about, it is about breakups and uh, it, ma it, it was uh, a gloomy, dark subject for a rather dark time. So somehow you probably can feel uh, the pandemic behind this project. This is an ongoing project, so we will be uh, still promoting this book and showing those works in the future. Mm, and I also started new series uh, of paintings, but I can't talk about them yet. Sorry. <laughs> but um, do you think, because this is what I read and um, heard many times, it's nothing new, it's not, uh, not a new approach of art, but that art, because of um, this what happens now, I should be more uh, political, like more like what we saw, for example, in Belarus. We had mm -hmm. this, or we are still observing the protests, and art is playing a quite important mm -hmm. role to mobilize, to to support people. I also did some talks about that the situation in in Belarus. So because what we are observing now um, will motivate more artists to be more political. Of course, yeah, I, I, I also will go uh, that direction. I often do, I think many of my works are political statements, but not in a direct way. For instance, this painting behind us, it's a, a lifting white birds lift Sorcius Alcina on this painting, and she's a bad, bad, bad character in the Orlando Furioso poem in this piece from the 16th century, that she's a woman and it's the freedom of women, of women which is criticized in this uh, poem of the 16th century. And I changed that because I, I uh, paint uh, her triumph. It's just, it's the context of the poem that one have to know to understand that this is a very feminist piece. Normally, so also commenting on the situation in Poland? Uh, yes, for instance, it's, it's an example. Uh, so I normally, yes, I do totally. I think most of my works are very political, but they are not so directly political that, you know, it's very easy to interpret them. You just need more time or more um, background of each of those works. But um, I definitely think it's very important to for arts to be present and to hear what's going on and to react. So I definitely uh, feel I'm part of this uh, movement and it should work, it should go on, it should it should. And have you change. been uh, yourself active during this protest in Poland or uh, during this women's rights uh, movement? Yes, I, well, for instance, yes, I was, of course. I cannot go to many protests because I have a two-year-old baby actually a small boy and when it was all coming I know I cannot take him uh, to the protest because I am too much afraid of him but I did uh, before he was born and uh, later as well for instance I uh, created I drew a, um, a centaur woman for Congress of Women in Brussels in, uh, and they use my logo now. I, and she's, it's a woman that is also a horse, and she has this, uh, how do you call it? The thunder. The, uh, the, the, the thunder, thunder uh, yes. symbol, mm -hmm. the red, uh, all over her. So, uh, for instance, I participated in, that, in this way that I uh, designed and drew this logo for this, uh, and it was used during the protests. Mm, yeah, that, 
it's one example. Yeah, that's great. And well, what do you observe, like, just like coming back perhaps uh, a little bit more about the um, uh, time of the pandemic, what your colleagues uh, are saying, what's their situation? Because you mentioned that not every one of your artist friends um, um, managed to, to get through this pandemic that, that well. Well, some of my friends were actually very down and depressed. Um, what we, me and my husband did, we was inviting them for dinner, uh, you know, taking them for a walk together to, to the forest, anything that was possible, because not everything was possible uh, during that time. And it's still not, not everything is possible. So I always try to, you know, help, uh, because uh, not everybody sells art as well. Uh, all the time. I'm quite lucky with this, I can live, uh, but n not all of my colleagues uh, had that uh, chance. Uh, I also, you know, buy the works when I, when I think I should help them. I just, we just talk, we, we go out, we, you know, we share food together. But I think many people had really very bad, bad time. And, um, well, what I can say, I always invite people to my place and so we can enjoy being together without being afraid because that's you know, what pandemic made to us, that we are all in panic and afraid that we, we're going to get sick or intoxicated. You know. mm. So um, I, think, um, I think artists should be more close to each other because I'm not an institution. And I cannot uh, help them with any financial support, but I can help them as their colleague. Mm -hmm. So I think if the artists, because we, we talk mainly about artists, would be close together and be, you know, we would help each other. And the art world, what the art world does to us, they make us uh, be in competition, competition all the time. And that's very bad and very very, 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 um, that's a major evil that, that is behind the art scene, the art world. So, you know. So more solidarity mm -hmm. uh, between artists. Between the, yes, not only solidarity for someone who is very far away, who needs our help, of course, uh, but also between each other, so then we can do something together for, for the world. Um, do you have that? Uh, do you think that this time had a positive impact on the art scene, or everything will reopen uh, and um, yeah, come back as it was before? I don't know. It depends. I have no idea. It depends what will uh, be in October, November, mm -hmm. December. Um, I became closer to many uh, colleagues that we never had time uh, as well to, to meet, you know. Uh, so that, uh, the fact that people had a little bit more time was positive, I would say. Also for, for their, uh, both their work and their families. Uh, if the art world is, has been changing, is it, it, it the process of change I can see mm -hmm. but I'm not sure whether it will be more democratic uh, or more whether it will be closer to the public I'm afraid it's the, the, the reverse because the institutions are closed and people are afraid and they cannot meet what I do I do privately you know so it's not good uh, Mm. Some people say the, the, the fairs, like Art Basel, the sort of art fairs will never be the same again. I'm not sure about that. We'll see. Um, and when I ha we had this opening in February in Krupa Gallery, it was great. Everyone was in mask and almost, you know, almost talking to each other from the distance. But everyone is enjoying this time. So I think this will come back because people cannot live in isolation. isolation. The isolation is a very harmful situation and dangerous. Uh, so I think the good, uh, uh, I, think, I think it all depends on us, but I think we will all be closer at the end, I hope. 
And maybe something will change in the art world, but I, I cannot tell, really. I'm not sure. I don't know. Paula, thank you very much for your openness. And thank you. Um, also not only to present us this, this exhibition, but also to talk about the consequences, not only for you, but for your colleagues, for the, for the art world. And it fits perfectly to the last interview where I was talking of a professor of psychology about the consequences for the, let's say, humans and uh, uh, the human nature. So it's just like conf confirming what you say, but of course, like here in this artistic dimension. I wish you all the best and I Thank hope you. I can visit your next, uh, next ex exhibition. I heard already from Kasia that um, they are planning to open this um, huge gallery space. Finally. Uh, finally, and yes. I'm, I'm sure that you will have, uh, that your works will be uh, represented there and can be seen there and can be bought uh, there. So thank you very much. And uh, for all of you uh, who want to follow the next talk, just press the button down and you will be informed. Thank you so much and greetings from Poland.